I hope you all are safe and fine. Communication is a very familiar word for all of us. And we all know the importance of communication in our life. There are two important ways of communication. One is direct communication, another one is indirect communication. In direct communication, we use words a lot. Now, today we are going to see a little bit about, in peripheral, about indirect communication. And I'm sure this session will be helpful for you. Now, communication is undertaken indirectly, even involuntarily. There are various ways this may be done. But in each case, it is the life within us that greatly needs to communicate with others. Even when we do not consciously want such communication to take place. One way in which indirect communication may take place is through the body. It sends its own signals even though we may not be aware of them. For example, a couple of months back, the same happened to me. In my health checkup, all my results were on the highest side. And the doctor was saying to me, it's not just because of your medical side. It's all because of your mind. Then I done my basic studies in TA, transactional analysis. I realized the truth. The body communication includes all the psychogenically induced physical symptoms with which a doctor is familiar. For example, the high blood pressure that turns out to be a result of stress or anxiety. The stimulated heart attack that turns out to have no organic basis and a host of other symptoms from dizziness to headaches that may have no organic basis. Now body communication also includes so-called body language. As we unconsciously twist our hands, we are communicating to others a message about our unexpressed anger, frustration or tension. Our stooped posture or slow sober way of walking is like a neon light that tells the world about the great psychological burden we are carrying, our despair or our feeling of spiritual fatigue. The unconscious change in our voice often say more than our words about how we are feeling. And people who are sensitive to others respond to voice modulation as well as to words. These body messages can be an open book that can be easily read by those who know the language. But you don't have to be a doctor or therapist to learn to read these messages. Anyone who is interested in other people takes the time to be observant and use common sense can read the body signals that almost all of us send out. They can tell us a lot, for it is as though a person's body went someone to know what is going on even though the person does not speak up about his inner feelings. Friends, this topic I'm making in two different parts. Now this is the end of part one. And we'll continue another part about the involuntary communication take place through unconscious psychological mechanisms. I hope this session was helpful for you. Thank you. God bless and stay safe.